A project located inside existing built density and or which is at a walkable distance to diverse uses such as banks, restaurants, supermarkets, has great benefits for both the project users and the environment since such a project will also contribute to compact development. Increasing the residential and non-residential densities in an area will reduce vehicle use and consequently also reduce the air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. Car accidents will also be less likely to occur. In addition, this credit will award points for projects that are located inside surrounding areas of dense development and or are at a walking distance to diverse uses. If the project satisfies both criteria, then the total points of both options will be awarded. As will be discussed shortly, for the LEED BD plus C warehouses and distribution centers and the LEED BD plus C healthcare projects, the credit requires different criteria. Let's take a closer look at this credit. Credit intent. To conserve land and to protect sensitive farmlands and wildlife habitat by promoting development in areas with existing infrastructure. To encourage walkability, transportation efficiency, and reduction of vehicle distance traveled. To improve people's health by encouraging daily physical activity. Credit Requirements we will start with the credit requirements for all LEED BD plus C projects, except LEED BD plus C warehouses and distribution centers and LEED BD plus C healthcare projects. Here is the credit roadmap. For all LEED BD plus C projects, except warehouses and distribution centers and healthcare, the credit contains two options, and the projects can choose either one or both of them. Option one, surrounding density, and option two, diverse uses. Let's take a closer look at the credit. Option one, surrounding density. Under this option, the project site should be located so that the quarter mile or 400 meter radius of the project boundary meets the values in the table displayed. Project teams should either use separate residential and non-residential densities or the combined density values on the displayed table. If the project teams cannot collect the density information for residential and non-residential uses separately, they can use the combined density values. Please note that in this table, non-residential density will be calculated as floored area ratio, but residential density will be calculated according to the number of dwelling units. If the quarter mile or 400 meter radius of the project also contains mixed uses, which means it contains both residential and non-residential uses, projects can calculate a weighted average for them. For example, if a mixed use building has a land area of two acres and the building contains 40% residential and 60% non-residential uses, Project teams can allocate 0.8 acres to the residential density and the remaining 1.2 acres to the non-residential density in the credit calculations. Here is the equation that would be used to calculate combined density, which basically divides the total floor area by the total buildable land in the quarter mile radius of the project site. Combined density equals total floor area divided by total buildable land. Please note that in LEED, buildable land excludes public right-of-way and any other land that is not considered buildable by the local code or other codes. It is also important to note that only with regard to the LEED BD plus C schools projects, project teams should neglect any physical education spaces, such as playgrounds or playing fields, from the development density calculations. Now, let's take a look at the documentation requirements for this option. To document option one, project team should submit the area plan or map that shows the project site and the location of residential and non-residential buildings within a quarter mile or 400 meters, and they should submit a narrative describing the previous development on the site. Now, let's take a look at option two, diverse uses, under this option, the building's main entrance should be within a half mile or 800 meter walking distance of the main entrance 
of four to seven, or eight or more existing and publicly available diverse uses, as shown on the displayed table. Projects that contain four to seven diverse uses will be awarded one point, while the projects that contain eight or more diverse uses will be awarded two points. However, there are several rules that LEED requires while counting diverse uses. First, the same type of store cannot be counted more than twice. For example, if there are four supermarkets within walking distance, they can only be counted as two diverse uses. Second, a diverse use outlet selling products in several categories can only be counted as one diverse use. For example, a retailer that contains a pharmacy and a supermarket within the same store cannot be counted as two diverse uses. Finally, the counted diverse uses must be present under at least three of the five diverse use categories shown on the table, exclusive of the building's primary use. It is important to know the diverse use categories for the exam purposes. They are food retail, community serving retail, services, civic and community facilities, and community anchor uses. Project teams can also count the planned but currently not operating diverse uses, but each diverse use must be active within one year of the date when the project accepts its initial certificate of occupancy. As is the case with all walking distance calculations, projects should confirm walkability on a map by the use of paths that provide a safe and comfortable environment for pedestrians and provide a continuous network of sidewalks. To document this option, project teams should submit the area plan or map that shows the project site, the location and type of each diverse use, and the walking routes. Now let's take a look at the credit requirements for LEED BD Plus C Warehouses and Distribution Centers projects. Here is the credit roadmap. The project teams have two options and can pursue either one or both of them. Option 1, Development and Adjacency, and Option 2, Transportation Resources. Option 1 also contains two paths and warehouses and distribution center projects can choose either one of them. Path 1. Construct or renovate the project site on a previously developed site that was used for industrial or commercial purposes. And Path 2. Construct or renovate the project on a site that is both a previously developed and adjacent site. Let's take a closer look. As mentioned in Option 1, Warehouses and distribution center projects have two paths and they can choose either one of them. In the first path, projects can earn two points if the project site is located on a previously developed site that was used for industrial or commercial purposes. In LEED, for a site to be considered as previously developed, a minimum of 75% of the land area should have been previously developed. But in order to get three points under Option 1, project teams need to choose the second path, which requires the construction or renovation of the project on a site that is both a previously developed site and an adjacent site. And the adjacent site must be used at the time for industrial or commercial purposes. In LEED, an adjacent site refers to the site having at least a continuous stretch of 25% of its boundary bordering parcels with a previously developed site. Intervening rights of way will not be considered a bordering parcel. Any part of the boundary bordering a water body can be excluded from the adjacent site calculation. To document option 1, Warehouse and distribution center project teams should submit the area plan or map that shows the project site, the previous development, and the adjacent industrial or commercial properties. In option two, on the other hand, the project team should construct or renovate the project close to transportation resources. Let's take a closer look at it. Under option two, project teams should construct or renovate the project on a site that satisfies two or three or four of the following transportation resources requirements. A project that satisfies two or three transportation resources requirements will earn one point, 
while a project that satisfies four of them will earn two points. In the first requirement, the site should be located within a 10-mile or 16-kilometer driving distance of a main logistics hub defined as an airport, seaport, intermodal facility, or freight village with intermodal transportation. In the second requirement, the site should be located within a 1-mile or 1.6-kilometer driving distance of an off-ramp to a highway. In the third requirement, the site should be located within a 1-mile or 1.6-kilometer driving distance of an access point to an active freight rail line. And in the fourth requirement, the site should be served by an active freight rail spur. Under this option, planned transportation resources can also be counted as long as they are listed, funded, and under construction by the date of the certificate of occupancy and complete within 24 months of that date. For documentation, project teams should submit the area plan or map showing the project site and the driving routes to the transportation resources and they should indicate the driving distances. Again, a straight line radius from the project site to the transportation resource will not be accepted. If any planned transportation resources are used for credit compliance, project teams should submit verification indicating that the transportation resources will be funded and under construction by the date of the certificate of occupancy and will be complete within two years of that date. Now, Let's continue our discussion with the credit requirements for LEED BD plus C healthcare projects. To earn points under this credit, healthcare projects either should be located inside a surrounding area that is densely developed or should be located close to diverse uses. One thing to note is that the project teams for healthcare projects cannot pursue both options and they need to choose either one of the two options. Here is the credit roadmap for LEED BD plus C healthcare projects. The credit contains two options and healthcare projects can choose either one of them. Option one, surrounding density, and option two, diverse uses. Let's take a closer look. Under option one, surrounding density, the project site must be located on a site for which the surrounding existing density within a quarter mile or 400 meter radius of the project boundary is at least seven dwelling units per acre or 17.5 dwelling unit per hectare with a 0.5 floor to area ratio. The counted density must be existing density, not zoned density, or the surrounding existing density within a quarter mile or 400 meter radius of the project boundary should be at least 22,000 square feet per acre or 5,050 square meters per hectare of buildable land. For previously developed existing rural healthcare campus sites, projects should achieve a minimum development density of 30,000 square feet per acre or 6,890 square meters per hectare. To document this option, healthcare project team should submit the area plan or map that shows the project site and the location of residential and non-residential buildings within a quarter mile or 400 meters, and they should submit a narrative describing the previous development on the site. Now, let's take a look at option two, diverse uses. Under this option, the healthcare project site should be located so that the building's main entrance is within a half mile or 800 meter walking distance of the main entrance of at least seven operational and publicly accessible diverse uses shown on the displayed table. Healthcare projects should also comply with LEED's rules for counting diverse uses. Again, that means the same type of store cannot be counted more than twice. A diverse use selling products in several categories can only be counted as one diverse use and the counted diverse uses must be present under at least three of the five diverse use categories, exclusive of the building's primary use. Again, project teams can count the planned but currently non-operating diverse uses, but the diverse use must be active within one year of the date that the project accepts the initial certificate of occupancy. 
To document this option, healthcare project teams should submit the area plan or map that shows the project site, the location and type of each diverse use, and the walking routes. Before finishing up this credit, it is also important to note that this credit does not qualify for exemplary performance. Lastly, let's take a look at the key things to remember for this credit. 1. Know the categories and types of diverse uses. 2. For the diverse uses calculations, the same type of store cannot be counted more than twice. A diverse use establishment selling products in several categories can only be counted as one diverse use, and the counted diverse uses must be present under at least three of the five diverse use categories exclusive of the building's primary use. 3. Walking distances to the diverse uses are measured from the main entrance of the building, not the functional entrance. 4. In the surrounding density option, if the quarter mile or 400 meter radius of the project contains mixed uses, project teams should calculate a weighted average of them. 5. With regard to only the LEED BD plus C schools projects, project teams should neglect any physical education spaces, such as playgrounds or playing fields, from the development density calculations. 6. Project teams can also count the planned but currently not operating diverse uses, but the diverse use must be active within one year of the date that the project gets the initial certificate of occupancy. 7. In LEED, for a site to be considered previously developed, the minimum 75% of the land area should have been previously developed. 8. In LEED, an adjacent site refers to the site having at least a continuous stretch of 25% of its boundary bordering parcels with a previously developed site. Intervening rights of way will not be considered as a bordering parcel. Any part of the boundary bordering a water body can be excluded from the adjacent site calculation. And 9. Even though this credit contains two options for healthcare projects as well, Healthcare project teams need to choose either one of the two options.